Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel, Inside My Holes, where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own personal struggles with borderline personality disorder, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, um, severe anxiety and panic attacks, depression, ADHD, um, compulsive OCD. <laughs> I talk about um, my narcissistic mother who severely um, beat me, my paranoid schizophrenic father who was in and out of mental institutes, and my unethical psychologist who raped me, and up just about a plethora <laughs> of other mental health related topics. But I only come on as a former patient of almost 20 years. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology, so I cannot diagnose you or give you a professional opinion. And all I ask in turn of you is your kindness and respect in the comments. Please be kind to me, be kind to other people who comment. We don't need to agree on everything, but we do need to agree on showing each other respect and kindness always. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Please hit that box on the right hand, lower right hand corner that says subscribe. That way you'll be notified every time a new video of mine comes out. It's 100% free. And if you like what you see, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Now today's video, I'm going to talk about why I decided late in life, um, in my 50s, to drop the facade um, and show my true colors. Dropping my facade has left me very, very lonely because I had to give up um, a lot of friendships in doing so and also a lot of acquaintances because people really didn't know who I was at all. For instance, I had this friend. Her name was Sandy, too. She's 20 years, she was 20 years older than me, and we used to take each other out for lunch um, she lives like a five minute walk from my house, maybe 10 minutes the most. And we took each other out every year for our birthdays. Um, we always went to Petucci's and she had a um, pizza. And we also saw each other other times during the year. And um, we'd send Christmas cards to each other. You know, we were friends, but I, I've had her over my house many, many times. She never once invited me over her house, but she's been over my house many, many times. She's seen my husband. She's seen my son, Austin, and but she never really knew who I was. Um, she thought I was this old-fashioned Puritan woman because she only saw me in the image that she wanted me to be. So she wanted to have a friend like herself who, um, you know, she never got married. Um, she dressed um, very, very unusual. I told you I like unusual people. She'd wear these big, big, wide brim hats. And um, she'd wear d fancy dresses. Like we'd be going out to Petucci's, right? D uh, and she'd want to, you know, be there have me be there for lunch at like 11 o'clock I don't even think they're open until 11 30 I don't know but she wanted me to be there like before the restaurant even opened you know and she was eating lunch that early and you know this is Bertucci's Are you guys familiar with Bertucci's the pizza place and like she'd go in there dressed to the nines you know with the big brim hat and um, all made up with the with the lip lipstick thick lipstick on and her nails all done, and um, all these rings on her hand, and all these thick, thick, um, like, I just wear this, but she had, like, really thick, big, chunky <laughs> necklaces, and, you know, like, a, a, a um, very dressy, like, she was going, like, late at night to, like, a, a, a formal occasion, okay, with a dress down way past her knees, and every time I met her, I felt like I had to replicate um, the way that she was dressed because it, <laughs> she was dressed all like that. If I came in 
um, dressed in jeans or, you know, a shirt, I would look um, <laughs> totally, um, it, it just, I felt I needed to be what she expected of me. That's what it was. So every time I went in Batucci's with her, um, I would dress up in long dresses and, you know, I mean, I always look nice anyway. I always do my hair and makeup, but I don't dress up in, you know, really fancy dresses and fancy high heel shoes going out, especially to Bertucci's, which is just like a family pizza place, it, it, pasta pizza, you know. So I would get all dressed up to and, you know, talk. To, it would be very uncomfortable for me um, during the lunch because I was pretending to be what she expected me or what she wanted me to be. Um, she had no idea. She would like, like, probably, you know, drop, faint, pass out. She'd faint or pass out if she knew that I cheated on my husband more than once. She'd probably pass out and faint if she, if she knew I was into pornography, I had an OnlyFans, um, that I, um, stole, um, she would definitely, um, she would not be able to comprehend that at all. Um, what other things have I done? That I've written many, many books that I had a two-year sexual affair with my psychologist. Um, so she knew nothing of me. Um, she didn't know any of this. You know, she just thought I was happily married, old-fashioned. Um, I dressed just like her. I guess I wanted to confirm for her to accept me. So I mimicked what she wore. Um, so I wouldn't... But then I got tired of doing it. Try, I got tired and tired of trying to uphold that facade. So I just stopped. Um, I just stopped communicating with her. I guess it was her birthday and it was my turn to call and, um, you know, say, let's get together for lunch. What day is good for you? We check our calendars. She checks her calendars. So when it was her turn, birthday and my turn to call her and um, make plans to get together I didn't call her I didn't call her I didn't send her a birthday card like I usually did and then when it was my birthday she didn't call me and send me a card probably because I didn't call her and send her a card isn't that a little weird though when you think maybe something happened to the person if you usually hear from someone at, you know at a certain time and you didn't hear from them wouldn't you at least you know, check in with them and say, hey, hi, Sandy, you know, I haven't heard from you. Um, we usually get together on our birthdays, but she didn't, she didn't call me or, and that, that's just how it ended like that. We just stopped contacting. So, um, and then it, w it happened to, with all my high school pals, my best gal pal from high school, Janice, um, I started getting into YouTube and doing YouTube videos um, that were risque. The YouTube videos were in my bra and panty. I wasn't wearing anything else. I just wore my bra and panty. And um, I put them up on Facebook. And, of course, I was friends or acquaintances. Well, I was friends with Janice. We went out together a lot. But I was acquaintance. I was, I, you know was friends on Facebook, not real friends, with all the other girls from high school, too, just like Janice. And, you know, they started all, you know, picking on me and tormenting me, like, what are you doing? Put your clothes back on. Are you a slut? You know, why, you know, questioning why I was doing YouTube videos and just wearing my bra and panty. And I think I explained this on another video that I wanted to entice men by dressing provocatively to watch the video and when they were watching it then they could hear um, me reciting my poetry so see pull them in with one thing and while they're watching me in my bra and underwear they're also what i was doing i was reading my poetry so they would you know listen to my poetry you know get them any way i can get them you know try to get them interested in poetry how could i get them interested in poetry by dressing provocatively while 
I'm reading my own poetry. Now, this is done countless times on TV, on commercials and ads. They're trying to sell you a car, right? What do they do? They have a girl scantily dressed on top of the car, you know, to sell you a car. Or they're trying to sell you something. And in magazines, you see it all the time for ads, advertisement. How do they lure people in to buy their product? They have some sex bomb <laughs> girl, you know, letting it all hang out, you know, very provocatively, scantily dressed. And I was just trying to do the same thing. That was what I was trying to do. I was trying to lure uh, men in by being scantily dressed um, so they would watch it. And what I was doing was I was reading my poetry and putting the links to my poetry books. I was just a way of advertising. But all these girls ganged up on me and um, guys thought I was a slut. They started um, saying derogatory things about me. Now, I was just... The guys from grammar school and high school that I was friends with on Facebook, which I all blocked and deleted those people off my Facebook. All I was trying to do was, you know, really be myself. I'm a very creative person. Um, I consider myself an artist. I'm a poet. I'm a writer. I'm a video streamer. Um, I did karaoke. Um, I was just trying to be artistic in the way I was doing things. But these people thought I was advertising my body. Um, the guys from that I knew from school, grade school, were, you know, um, being inappropriate with me, um, sexually suggestive. They were trying to get together with me, trying to hook up with me. And that's not what I was trying to do. Um, and I try to explain it to people that I'm just trying to promote my poetry um, like a commercial, like an ad that you see in TV or magazines um, by using sex as a way, you know, a sex appeal. That I wasn't trying to, you know, make my YouTube, uh, um, you know, a platform to hook up with guys. And But that's what all the girls from high school were, were thinking I was doing. And so I couldn't be myself with them. And eventually my friendship, oh, I think I was friends with Janice for over five years. That ended because... Um, you know, she kept, you know, they were kept tormenting me on my posts um, over and over again. So I blocked them and I blocked Janice and I blocked all the high school girls and, and the boys as well, or the guys, you know, because they were saying derogatory things about me and I just couldn't be myself. I couldn't put up my posts without them saying something nasty. So I just figured that I don't want to associate with anyone who can't accept me. I'm tired of pretending to be something I'm not. At almost 60 years old now, I don't want to have to pretend anymore. It's just a burden. It's so difficult um, to keep the facade up, to pretend to be something that you're not. It's very difficult to keep that facade up. So I'd rather be alone, and which this is what I've done now. Um, I'm alone. I'm in my own company because um, I can just be myself with you guys. I don't have to keep up any pretense, you know, because you guys either accept me, you'll subscribe to me and watch my videos, or you won't accept me, you won't subscribe to me, and you won't watch my videos, you know. So either way, you know, um, but I'm true to myself. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. Um, and, yeah, that's why I dropped the OnlyFans, too. Um, because all those guys thought, um, they thought I enjoyed, um, you know, getting off on myself in public. And that's not true at all. And that was all an act. It was all fake. It was all a facade. It was fake so I could, you know, get money for, for doing, um, for my, chan for my, um, you know, for my OnlyFans. Um, it was all phony. It was all put on, you know. Um, I didn't get, you know, it was an act, okay. <laughs> I did not orgasm at all in any of those um, OnlyFans clips or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, it was all um, me um, acting. 
that's what it was. I was being an actress, um, which is something I enjoy. I was getting dressed up. I I bought uh, I got all the um, lingerie from Victoria's Secrets. You know the stockings, the leggings, the the sexy um, you know the the G string the um, what do you call it thongs and everything like that. And um, I got all that and and just pretended and just had you know. But I did not like doing that. I really didn't. It felt very shameful. It felt Part of me felt it was really disgusting to do that. I didn't want to do that, um, but I went ahead and, and did it anyway. Um, and men treated me like a slab of meat, and I hated that. They'd write in, they'd write, you know, they'd write to me because that's what you do in the OnlyFans. And I'd have to write back and pretend like, oh, yeah, I'm really turned on by all this. And I wasn't. I was just doing it, you know, for the recognition, um, to get money, to be recognized um, for... For something <laughs> um, I was trying it was a creative outlet but I hated the part where I had to take all my clothes off and and do that um, and I you know I really I grew to hate it more and more and more because it was phony it wasn't real these guys thought I was really getting it all with myself these guys really thought that you know what I was doing was turning myself on. And it wasn't. It wasn't at all. It was like me being an actress playing a part. That's all it was. Um, and that's how I viewed it. But these guys didn't view it that way. And it just got so disgusting to me the way they would treat me like a slab of meat. They would send me videos of themselves jerking off. They would. Uh, they would. Because they'd say, oh, this is what I did when I watched your OnlyFans video. I was, you know wanking the hot dog, the wiener, or whatever. And it's like, I looked at that, and I go, oh, brother. You know, I was just disgusted with it. And I had to write back and be phony and, you know, oh, wow, you, that really turns me on. It. You know, I, it was all fake, 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 fake. So, you know, I, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. It's totally 100% fake. I hate it. I hate myself for doing it. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't mind, um, like, doing some nude pictures, like, like, out, like, on the beach or something. Like, something, like, with the water in my hair and the waves crashing on me. Like, some, I don't mind doing that. Like, that to me is tasteful. But I don't like doing anything, like, touching my bot, you know, touching myself sexually or doing any masturbating or anything like that. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that at all, you know. So soft porn, soft, you know, where I just like um, something like that, I I wouldn't mind. But they don't want that, you know. Are you kidding? They wanted me to do more and more and more. The more I gave, the more they want out at me, you know. And it just got to be a point where it was just utterly disgusting to me. So, so I decided, so I quit that and I quit hanging around with the high school girls I deleted and blocked all of them um, and I you know I lost my friendship with Janice um, and I lost my friendship with my neighbor um, who we used to take each other out for birthdays because she thought I was the other extreme one a group of people one group of people from high school thought and from OnlyFans thought I was a whore and a slut the neighbor thought I was like um, some Victorian old-fashioned old-time woman you know <laughs> it's like two groups you know two different people thinking like totally and I just want to be me at the end of the day I just want to be me right so I'm gonna just do what I'm doing now because I feel like I'm being authentic and I, I'm sure a lot of people would frown on the books I've written because I've written the books um, in very explicit language um, as a writer it's very detailed it's very graphic um, but that's what happened and I'm a writer and I write in detail I write graphically and that's my style um, I'm not writing um, I'm just recounting what happens you know exactly how it happened um, and I love doing my um, 
YouTube videos too, and you know, I'm sure this won't wouldn't mesh with other people, <laughs> especially my husband's family. They never knew me anyway. They didn't know anything about me, my husband, my in-laws, my husband's family. Not one thing, you know. They don't know who I am, you know. Um, I was just, you know, Andrew's wife. <laughs> Andrew's wife who didn't get really involved with the family because I couldn't be myself, you know. I couldn't I couldn't really be me with his family. Um, and, you know, I don't, if I can't be me, I then I don't want to be around any, um, anyone. I'd rather be alone, you know. I think I'm best, I'm an introverted person. I like my poetry and I like my own company and um, my husband and my children. And if someone can't accept me for me, then um, I'm not. I'm not going to do a facade anymore. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm just not. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to put up any facade anymore with anyone. I'm. I'm done with it. At 60 years old, <laughs> I'm done trying to be something I'm not. Okay. So either people accept it, or people don't accept it, and that's what it is. So that's. And that should be for you, too, you know, just do you, be you, be yourself. Um, that's all you can do, you know, because, it, you know, it's just too tiresome um, to try to do it any other way. Eventually, you, you're not going to be able to keep that up. Eventually, it will eat away at you. Eventually, it'll, it will erode at you if you try to keep that up. So, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm always... I appreciate people who comment and let me know if you, you know, have different masks you wear with different people and um, how that has played out in your life. Um, you know, drop me a line. I love to hear from you guys. Okay, till next time.